Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to configure database log shipping in SQL Server. We'll be using two ways to do it, SQL Server Management Studio Graphic User Interface and using T-SQL Script. And the things that we will learn in this video, uh, number one is enable log shipping configuration, that is mandatory. Uh, number two, configure backup setting on primary, uh, that is also a mandatory because it might depend on your uh, requirement in your organization for backup and restore operation. And secondary server for log shipping, also adding secondary server um, for log shipping and configure log shipping monitoring server and configure copy restore operation. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, this is, uh, I'm connected with my management studio. So this is my primary server, Tech Brothers SQL SQL Prod. And this is my secondary server, Tech Brothers Client SQL Mirror. What I want to do, I want to log ship a database on SQL from SQL Prod onto SQL Mirror. So this becomes my primary uh, server for log shipping and this becomes my secondary log shipping. So let's go ahead and uh, start log shipping a database keep in mind there there are requirements for um there are prerequisites for a database to have uh, log shipping enabled that database needs to be in full recovery mode or bulk log recovery right here is the recovery model it needs to be either full or bulk if you have a database that's in simple recovery mode, that is not going to be used in log shipping and log shipping will fail. So let's cancel this. This database is ready for us. I'm going to log ship sales order database from my uh, SQL server, uh, SQL prod to my primary server and to my secondary server, which is SQL mirror. So let's go ahead and do it. Right click on the database, go to task and go to ship transaction logs. As you can see that uh, right now the uh, log shipping configuration is not enabled on our primary server so we need to enable that first click on enable this as a primary database in log shipping next thing is that we need to uh, transaction log backup we need to do the settings we need to configure backup settings uh, right now by default it's every 15 minutes but uh, if uh, you think that your transaction logs uh, in 15 minutes gets too big to copy and restore and uh, that operation doesn't complete in 15 minutes then you need to maybe change it to every five minutes so let's go ahead I'm going to basically uh, uh, change it to every um, the schedule every maybe two minutes just for this demo purposes so when you click on a backup configuration first thing it asks is you need to have a shared um, folder which it your primary server is going to copy the transaction log backup all the backups is going to be copied to this share folder your secondary server is going to come to this folder and grab those backups for restore operation so I have created already the backup uh, the shared uh, shared folder so let's go and take a look this is my log shipping backup shared folder if I right click and go to the properties <clears throat> as you can see that this is shared and if you click on share I have a user that has full rights to write and delete or read uh, from this shared folder keep in mind that whatever the user you use for log shipping that user needs to have full control may if not full control then uh, write and read uh, from this um, share sharing folder so keep in mind let's cancel this this is all set for us so I'm going to go ahead and provide this folder right here All right, another um, a concern up here, a lot of folks will tend to create a shared folder on primary or um, uh, secondary server. My recommendation is do not create this show, share folder on primary or the secondary server. Try to create this shared folder on a shared drive which is not part of primary or secondary server. And also the user that you're using for log shipping need to have permission on that. Because uh, the reason it is that if, let's say that if you're primary, you created this on primary server and uh, uh, primary server goes down, then this sharing uh, becomes unavailable for log shipping to uh, go and copy and restore. So your log shipping will fail. 
as long as this shared, shared folder is available and um, the transaction logs are there, then your log shipping will remain intact. So let's go ahead and um, uh, provide that. And after that, uh, this is if you wanted to use your primary server, the local path, which I don't recommend. So we're not going to use it. Delete uh, files after uh, this depends on your uh, requirement. This is a retention for your files that if uh, if you keep like 72 hours, let's say that your files are too big, it's going to consume a lot of space for you. So you might want to consider uh, deleting 24 hours, um, uh, deleting more than 24 hours those files. And if you wanted to send an alert, if backup doesn't happen, you can send that every hour in one hour. If backup didn't happen, then something went wrong in SQL uh, in uh, log shipping. So you would like to know that back behind the scene when you we schedule right here, as you can see that it's every 15 minutes. What I'm going to do is every five minutes. Keep in mind when you s uh, schedule this every five minutes, then it means that you're giving just five minutes between copying file and restoring file on your secondary. So if your database is big, 15 minutes is, is pretty good. You can change it to 30 minutes. Uh, otherwise, your log shipping will go haywire because um, it wouldn't have time to copy and restore uh, uh, and next transaction will come into place. So it'll be way behind uh, as far as uh, your uh, 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 copy and restore operation. So I'm going to go ahead uh, just for this uh, demo purposes, five minutes. My database is not big, so I'm okay with the transaction five minutes. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Up here is the uh, setup backup compression in SQL Server 2012 and SQL Server 2014. It's pretty good uh, right here, the compression. If you wanted to use um, backup compression, you can use that. Keep in mind that when backup is compressed, it will save your um, uh, disk drive space, but in uh, restore operation, it's going to take same amount of time. So we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And now our next uh, uh, target is, our next uh, action item is to add our secondary server so we're going to go ahead and click on add now log shipping requires database to be initialized so let's go ahead and connect with our secondary server as you can see you have three options if your database is already initialized that means that you have taken the backup and transaction log backup and uh, restored it on your secondary database and also you restored it in no recovery so that your database is in restoring mode then you don't need to set up all this and you can click on no the secondary database is already initialized so first option is if your database doesn't exist in my case on secondary database it doesn't exist so I'm going to choose the first option that go ahead and uh, take the backup of the database and restore it on the secondary and this means that go ahead and initialize the database for me. I'm not going to do anything. You go ahead and do that. The second option is that let's say that your database is really big and you don't want to take the backup right now. You already have the backup. So what it's going to do is yes, I already have the backup and go ahead, take that backup and restore and initialize the secondary database for me. So you can choose the second option if your database is big. Other is copy files. Right here is this, uh, it's going to go into shared drive and copy the transaction log uh, backup and copy to the local drive and then it's going to go ahead restore. So in my case, I, I'm going to provide, this is my, uh, right here is my da uh, data uh, folder. That's uh, what I'm saying is, Okay, secondary database. Uh, okay, the job will go in um, the shared folder, and after shared folder, it's going to copy that into this folder and going to restore it. Now, it's going to copy this on this folder. I want to go ahead and delete this copy after um, maybe 36 hours because uh, maybe the, these files are really big, and I don't want the um, I, I don't want it to just go and uh, grab all that um, uh, disk space and uh, keep the files over there and keep occup occupied the space. So next is restore transaction. When you do restore transaction right here, uh, you have two options, no recovery mode and standby mode. No recovery mode will always be in, uh, if you do that, it's going to be in restore mode. If you don't want users to connect to that particular database during restore operation, you can click on standby mode up here. 
Uh, here is a, the delay restore database if you wanted to delay it that's that the settings are there you can do that and this will if zero minutes means that as soon as copy is done it's going to go ahead and restart uh, rest, uh, it's going to go ahead and start the restoring operation right away so um, here's the alert that if a restore no restore occurs within 20 within 45 minutes you might want to change it to 30 minutes now uh, it depends on your uh, 15 minutes depends on, on your uh, backup um, file how much the transaction log backup you wanted to configure a uh, minus 40 minus 5 minutes so I'm going to go ahead if restore operation doesn't happen in 20 minutes I want to get alert that something went wrong so back behind the scene right here is the job name that will be created and it's going to um, give it, it's going to run every 15 minutes between 12 a.m. like all day so this is going to go ahead and restore uh, do the restore operation I'm going to go ahead and change this to six minutes I just wanted like five minutes for the transaction log to to be created and copied and then maybe 10 minutes right here to restore give a little bit time to restore so we're gonna go ahead and click OK as you can see uh, this database is configured for log shipping and our next option is m monitor if you wanted to monitor your log shipping keep in mind the recommendation from me is that uh, don't use your primary or secondary server as your monitor server use a third SQL server instance if you wanted to uh, basically configure monitor server instance for log shipping and all you have to do is basically click here and it's going to create a job if you click on here and it's going to go in setting and you need to click uh, connect with um, uh, whatever the uh, monitor server is going to be and it's going to create this job it, this job is going to keep up with everything whether it's restore fails or uh, uh, it, in production environment it's recommended you might want to uh, uh, go ahead and set up your monitoring instance so that you would know that where the operation has failed if it failed so I'm going to cancel this for now and go ahead click OK as you can see the operation started log shipping operation everything went okay so we're gonna go ahead and close this and let's go on our secondary database and see if that database is there refresh the database as you can see sales order is in restore mode and let's go in our uh, um, folder so we're going to go ahead go in the shared folder and see if our backup file is there if the copy operation succeeded and right here is our sales order backup right here 225 and this is the older from previous demo so 225 225 this uh, the backup is copied to our shared folder so restore operation will come to this shared folder and grab this database and restore it so we're going to go ahead and cancel this. Our log shipping is set up for this database. Anytime you want to add multiple databases, you need to right click on that database and uh, enable that database for the log shipping. Every time you uh, create, uh, add a database, it's going to add a job in agent and uh, keep up with your log shipping operation. So this is how you do it using SQL Server Management Studio. Let's go ahead and look at the script that we just created so here's my log shipping I'm going to just go through real quick this is very important that you script your log shipping configuration let's say for for some reason you have to delete your log shipping and wanted to enable the log shipping again all you need to do is run this script but there is a, a, a little bit trick to this uh, 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 script one is that uh, up here it says that uh, script to run at primary you need to manually get this script and run on pri primary and if you notice right here this script and ends here so once you're done doing this the first part you need to manually grab the secondary adding a log shipping configuration on the secondary server you need to grab this part of the script and run on secondary server keep in mind these options are the same exactly the same what we did 
uh, in our uh, SQL Server Management Studio graphic user interface. I just wanted to mention that it is always a good idea to script it out and this is the T-SQL script. You don't need to go through uh, again from the um, uh, uh, wizard point of view. You can just run this script on primary and secondary and it will set up your uh, log shipping back online. So basically this is how you um, set up your log shipping using SQL Server Management Studio graphic user interface and using T-SQL script and I hope this video helps.